All right, Eddie is Fordham. It's David Harry here from Liverpool TV. And I'm just going to give you a demonstration as to what I consider to be a cheap PC which is well capable of running Eddie's for HD. Okay, so what it is, this PC is just kind of a second-hand Dell workstation. Let's see, what is it? It's an Optiplex 3020. I picked this up for £130. Um, when it came to me, it also had a bit of damage through the post, and the seller uh, kind of knocked off another 35 quid to bring it to a, an, around an even 100. So this is a £100 PC that I bought off eBay. Okay, so let me just go to system here. Let's see, system properties, settings. As you can see here, it is an i5-4590. Now, what it is, that's a 3.3 gigahertz CPU. It's only quad-core, no multi-threading. And this is obviously like, you know, a, a Gen 4 CPU. So this is like four or five years old. Also, I've got eight gigabytes of RAM. Interestingly as well, whoever's previously been at this computer has put uh, mixed memory in here as well. So the memory's not ideal either. Uh, let's see, I'm on 64-bit OS, which is Windows. And uh, that's uh, Windows 64 Pro. Okay, so there's the basis of the system there. So what I'm going to do is just go through a bunch of things. In fact, hold on, before I do that, let me just pull up the, um, the what's in the monitor here. So... Let's keep an eye on this and we'll see exactly what's going on. And the reason why I'm doing this video is uh, quite obviously, you know, there's been some uh, talk on the forum recently of like, you know, what Edis will run on, cheap builds, whatnot. And I think a lot of people are very confused with what the word cheap or low cost means. And especially, you know, in relation to, you know, what that could mean for Edis. So here we go. Yeah, there's a basic project there. So I've got a little bit of media in here. What it is, this is um, a HQX and HQX maxed out. Sorry, HQ, sorry. This is HQ maxed out. Um, so this is a fairly large file, 30 gig. Oh, yeah, do the thing worth noting here as well. This PC is running with a 128 gig boot SSD. And as you can see here, I'm actually using the boot SSD with these files on and such as well. So Edius Windows and the project, they're all running from the same boot file, uh, sorry, from the same boot SSD. Okay, so let me just launch this project. So like I say, this is 60 frames a second, this. So this is very taxing, you know, quite possibly for like any system. I personally would only really normally be using 25 frames a second for the stuff that I do. Um, but what it is, this just happens to be conveniently on this system because at the moment, uh, I think maybe some people will have noticed some of my recent posts where I'm basically testing out a whole bunch of direct show capable capture cards to see if Edius works with them. And voila, it actually does. It's awesome. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so what it is, this, this bit of footage here was captured via an Elgato card uh, direct to HQ over HDMI. So let me just drag this to the timeline. Okay, so let me have a quick look at the properties of this clip. Okay, so there we go, 60 frames a second, Grass Valley HQX. I mean, in fact, I think, oh, actually, do you know what? This is a HQX encoder. Right, so interestingly here, although the source is 8-bit, um, the actual codec, because I thought I was mistaken, I thought this was me HQ test. It's not, this is a HQX test. So this is a 10-bit codec, right? Um, although the content originally starts off at 8 bit, um, it just gets uh, basically encapsulated within, within a 10 bit, you know, capture. So basically, it's, a tr it's truncated inside the 10 bits, but nonetheless, Edius is reading this as 10 bit and it is a 10 bit file. So we're actually testing full 10 bits. So 60 frames a second, 10 bit HQX. And then if we just go to the project settings, oh, wrong button for project settings. Just give me a second. Oh, actually, wait, wait there, while we're here, is my device preset for the Elgato, by the way. Let me just show people. There you go. So just a quick quick thing there on the Elgato. I'll actually be doing a fairly in-depth video at some point for my YouTube channel, which I'll link back to the forum with regards to that Elgato capture system. It's working great on my Edia system here. Okay, so what I was going to do there was go to Project Saturns. As we can see... 1920, 1080, which is full HD, 60 frames a second, blah, blah, 10 bit, all the rest of it. So this is a full 10 bit project. Now let's just see if this really like old 100 pound machine is capable of playing this file. Oh, look at that. 
Okay, so interestingly, not only is it playing the file, but it's using the full buffer. So if we have a look down here at the buffer when it starts playing, there we go. And fairly quickly, it fills that buffer as well. Now, another couple of interesting points to maybe, you know, kind of bear in mind here is let's see exactly what Edius is using when we play this file through. Okay, so as we can see there, I've just let it play for a bit just so we can get its teeth into it. CPU usage is on 44%, so that CPU usage is, is taken into consideration not just like Edius' use of the CPU, but any background tasks by Windows. Also, memory usage, 3 gig. Now, interestingly there, let's see what Edius is actually using out of that. Well, that's interesting. 1.3 gigabytes, 1.4. I'd safely say 1.5 gigabytes there. So Edius is using... I don't know if I can just stop that. I have a sticky space button. Hold on. Right, sticky space button. I keep I keep hitting my keyboard too hard. Right, so there we go. 1.3 gigabytes Edius is using there. So that may be, may also be of interest, you know, to, to certain people as well. Because again, a lot of confusion as to how much RAM is needed in a system. Like I say, this is eight gigabytes. I've actually had Edius run on a two gigabyte machine. Not that that's ideal, of course, but it's capable of doing it at a push if you're really stuck, especially if you're using a low end Celeron, uh, which is quick sync enabled. You can actually do stuff with it at a pinch. Uh, minimum system requirements, I would say, was four gigabytes for Edius. Eight is well enough. And as we can see there on this particular project, it's hardly using any of that RAM. Well, it's, it's using less than a quarter of the RAM available. Okay, so anyone who thinks that they need 32 gigabytes of uh, uh, gigabytes of memory to run Edius, uh, I think they, they kind of like maybe need to go and re readjust that appraisal of what they think a system for Edius needs. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, let me just get rid of that for a moment. Right, so what I'm going to do is just randomly cut some stuff in the timeline here. Just bear in mind, I've got a sticky space button as well, so it might just get a little bit weird. Okay, right, so I've just done some random cuts there. Right, let me just throw a layout on here. I don't know. I mean, to, to, I've got to be dead honest. I've not even tried this. So far on this system, all I've done is do it, is use it as an ingest uh, for some of these tests that I'm testing as well, just to keep it away from like a couple of my main systems. So here we go. Okay, as you can see there, that layout of cut happened in perfect real time, also with a full buffer. Now, let's see. In fact, let me just get rid of that audio there. Right, I'm going to put that over here. Now, this definitely will mess it up, but let's see how, as to how far it messes it up. Oh, well, actually, I was wrong. That's playing it. Okay, so that's two streams of 60 frames per second, HQX 10-bit media playing there. In fact, what I'll do, just to give Edius a bit of a chance, what I'm going to do is play the timeline just ahead of that edit. Now, for anybody who doesn't understand the reason for doing this, is what happens is Edius will start looking ahead in the timeline, and wherever possible, what it will do, it will do a, a very quick pre-render of what is in front of it, hence what the buffer system is for that you see monitoring down on the bottom of your taskbar here. So what happens is Edius looks ahead, as a kind of gets a gauge of what's in front of it, and it will utilize the CPU as best as possible for what's about to play in front of it, as opposed to what it is handling at that moment in time within the timeline as well. So basically, it's a very intelligent system for kind of determining what it's capable of doing in real time. So that said, the, the longer you give it as a lead into any particular part where the timeline could become sticky, it will just give Edius the best opportunity to kind of get itself together and hopefully play through stuff, which may otherwise be just on the limit of the CPU. So let's see if that happens. Sticky spacebar. Okay, as we can see, that worked. Now, if I place it just there, I mean, the only problem here now is, is I'm not entirely sure, but Edius may all already remember the buffer for this. So if I play it from here, there might be a chance that it may not hit real time straight off, but then catch up with itself. Yeah, there we go.
Okay, so as you can see there, that's all perfectly working in real time. So like I said, that this is a hundred pound computer and there's two streams of 60 frames per second, HQX 10 bit. I mean, I don't know if, it, you know, for me personally, that is, you know, that, that that's that's pretty tough <laughs> and you know and it's handling it i mean you know the one thing i will make clear here as well and this is going to be for people who have never come across edius before or who may maybe pass them by the forum take it from me edius is the best nle in the world and one of the reasons is because of what i'm doing here you try doing that on like avids or anything like that or premiere on a on this type of computer and you will not be able to do it edius is well better than all that lot for handling uh, the likes of the cpu and such and also utilize and quick sync because right now what's happening it's leaning heavily onto quick sync um, and i think it was probably one of the first nles to do that properly and it's probably still the best at doing it as well anyway i digress so let me carry on so what i'm going to do here now is do something that will definitely mess up the timeline i'm well actually no i don't think this will it's doing a picture in picture there so let me just do a long slow dissolve right so i'm just going to do manual keyframe dissolve here let's see how this handles it okay handle that brilliantly now let's let's go to the bin here let's uh let's add a title right okay so as you can see I speak Martian English. Hold on. Let me just try. The only thing here as well, I'm not inside. This is a test I've never tried. It's just to see if whether just one character or a zillion characters on the screen with its inbuilt title actually has an effect on CPU usage. But I think that's going to be enough there for us to get a gauge as to what's going on here. Okay, so let me just save that title. Now what I'm going to do is drag that over here. Now I will be surprised if it plays this. In fact, what I'll do, I'll play it right from the beginning. I won't give it a chance to catch its pre-buff and let's see what happens. Yeah, see that straight from the beginning, just the first few frames because the because the pre buffer had to fill and then it was perfectly in real time. Okay, so what else I'm going to do here? Let me just apply a cut here, and on this this part of the edit here, what I'll do? Let's see. I know. Let let me put um, color correction on. So I'll put the primary corrector on, and what I'll do? I'll just go completely mad with this. So let me just do something so we can obviously see that things are happening, right? There we go. Oh yeah, and I don't know if anyone's aware of this on the uh, on the forum, but I'm obviously a color grader, which is obviously very evident by this very quick grade. Right, so what I'm gonna do is okay that. Now, what I'm gonna do to give this some assistance, I'll switch off that title track. Now, this definitely will fail. I can, I can positively say that even though I've never tried this before, and that's because we are now starting to really push the edit. Okay, so there we go. So that's failed real time there. Um, now, the thing is, no amount of pre-run up to that's going to sort that out because what it is, although Edius would utilize the CPU as best as possible with its pre-buffer, the simple fact is that the mathematics involved in actually kind of working that particular part of the edit out completely exceeds the CPU. So no amount of pre-buffering will ever get rid of that. That would require a render or, let's see, uh, so I'm in full 10-bit here. Let me drop to 8-bit. I still don't think that this will work. No, so that's not going to go anywhere near it. Now, interestingly, let's see if dropping to half res might sort that out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and whilst that's doing that, um, let's pull up the monitor. Ah, look at that. Edius is using less than 700 megabytes. <laughs> right, so, hold on. Oh, this sticky space bar's doing me head, and I wonder if it's got something to do with task manager being over the top. Right, now very interestingly here, look at these two yeah, look at these two kind of readouts as I play that back again. Because this is insane, right? That memory usage there is 752 just for Edius and CPU usage was less than a half. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so that quite categorically proves that you don't need 32 gigabytes of RAM to run Edius because there's Edius running in less than a gig. It's utilizing less than half the CPU and it's a, it's applying PCC to a 60 frames per second 10 bit HQX file. So in, fa in fact, actually, I made mention before of QuickSync. We're not even using QuickSync here. <laughs> this is all CPU, right? So again, you know, this is a, I don't know. This is actually blowing me away right now. I'm really getting into this because this is the first time I've tried this. I mean, I've made some bold statements on the forum over the last couple of posts here without, you know, actually trying it with this particular system before I said it. Um, but yeah, this is actually proven to be way better than what I'd actually initially thought. Okay, now interestingly, let's see what happens or what, what the system utilizes when we're in like full mode here. So basically, we're, we're, we're going to totally max it out and we're going to kind of like break it as it were. But it'll be interesting to see how much of the like processes it's going to use to do that when it does max out. Yeah, okay, so look at that. Even though, obviously, we've maxed out the timeline there, we've maxed out the, the process and potential of the system, we, we've seen it hit 100 and fell real time. But interestingly, the memory used allocated to Edius on this system was still just under a gigabyte. Okay, so I'm hoping that, you know, I'm actually just trying to prove a few points here as to like how much you can spend to get something that runs Edius on. But I'm fairly sure that some of the results that I'm coming up with here are going to be very surprising to a lot of other people. I mean, in fact, that was very surprising for me because I'd, I would have thought that once the timeline had exceeded real-time capabilities and the system has been asked too much of, I would have thought that the memory usage would have gone up. Apparently not. Okay, so I think with this particular demonstration here, oh yeah, let me just randomly scroll through the timeline like a loony. There we go. Vi virus protection is out of date. Well, no worries about that Windows because uh, I'm not online and I don't plug anything else into this computer. Right, so there we go. I mean, look at that. That's, um, for want of a better phrase, buttery smooth, which is a term well often overused, which I don't particularly like because people use it to describe things that are not particularly buttery smooth. But in this particular instance, that's buttery smooth. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to flip to another project just to give ourselves another idea as to what this like low cost system is, you know, basically able to do. Okay, so what it is now, I'm about to do a little demonstration with some uh, H.264 MP4 footage. And interestingly for this one, what I'm going to do is use an external media drive. Now in this instance, I'm using a 128GB MSATA SSD, which is inside a little tiny uh, USB 3 case. And it's just connected, obviously, via USB 3 as well to the computer. So this should give some, you know, give anybody a really good example of like what's achievable uh, with an external USB 3 media drive as well. Okay, and here, let's see where are we? Basically, what it is, this is actually one of my little discs that I use for doing my disc imaging for like my hackintoshes and stuff and all the rest of it, all my disc images for that stuff and whatnot. Where am I? I can't even read the screen. <laughs> right, so there we go. So I'm going to launch this. Now, what it is, this particular project was actually prepared on my main system that I use. I have like a few options that I can run Edius on, um, but there's one in particular that I really like, and it's actually a, a, a still an old Haswell i7. It's the 4790K. It's the unlock processor, but I don't overclock or anything like that. But I still find that that's well sufficient enough for a lot of the stuff that I do anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just run through a couple of the assets here or a couple of the parameters. Let's see what we're playing with. Okay, so properties for the media. So as we can see here, this is UHD 4K, 25 frames per second. Also, this is an AVC coding. This is actually a footage which is XAVCS. So this is from a Sony camcorder and it's in 100 megabits as well for the uh, the bit rate. Let's see, Project Saturns. Um, blah, blah. So we're in 1080, 25p. Now, inadvertently, this particular project, what it is, I have a number of different um, 
what's the name like you know presets that are used like my own preset builds before i start a project unfortunately for this one i'd actually inadvertently started it in 10 bit so i'll kind of address that as anyway as i run through the timeline and just a quick note on that um, from my understanding as well edius does not do dithering so the thing is if you're you know trying to switch between 10 and 8 bit one way or the other there's no dithering involved so therefore if you've got 8-bit media such as the vast majority of like the camera footage out there which is shot around the world I'm gonna say that make that that clear and the vast amount of footage that's ever shot in the world is h.264 8-bit so for that particular stuff um, you don't need to like you know use a 10-bit project one you'll be putting some more excessive kind of processing in the chain that you don't necessarily need and two it won't make a blind bit of difference uh, the only time that something like that may come into play and may work for you is if you're using dithering with inside certain parts of the workflow and you were trying to kind of like you know do the coloring and stuff and whatnot if you were going from like you know up and down and stuff but in this instance it won't matter and that's maybe just some information that some people might find useful Okay, so what I'm going to do is attempt to play this. <laughs> this definitely won't play. This is full 10-bit uh, UHD. It's definitely not going to play, but we'll give it a t we'll give it a try anyway. My device, and then we'll click next. Uh, hold on, there's something wrong there. <laughs> Let me just get this out of the way. Although that appeared to be playing real time, I don't think it was. Let's just see what the buff is saying. Top my device. And then we'll click next. Um, okay, right. I'll I'll hold my hands up here. I really thought I was gonna have to drop that resolution to get that working. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. This is just getting insane now. So this is UHD footage, 4K, playing wrongly in the 10-bit timeline in 1080 and it's playing this is great um okay so i'm going to come here now what it is this is a, a part of the same clip used just to mask over with the blade and a bit of a dissolve and stuff so this definitely will not play okay so what i'll do even if i get apply a bit of pre a bit of pre-run ahead of that section it still won't play and the reason is is because it's massively exceeded the real-time capability which is being determined by the cpu of this computer i'll try it anyway but it, it won't work but my phone is now asking me to put a fingerprint in so i'm gonna put my fingerprint there we go it failed immediately so let me drop it down to 8-bit. The thing is, I'm going to hazard the guess here that this definitely won't work either. And that is just purely because we are asking way too much of this right now. But my phone is now asking me to put a fingerprint in. So I'm going to put my fingerprint in. Okay, so that failed. Now what I'm going to do, I'll drop it to half res. Maybe it might stand a chance. My fingerprint in. Now that might have asked you something different if you don't have a there we go oh and also there as well let me just check something else in fact quickly let me just see that's a bit that we're, we're massively pushing the system here let's see what it's doing as far as cpu and memory usage is concerned we fingerprinting now that might have asked you something different if you don't have a fingerprint scanner it might have said like a code or a Okay, so yeah, less than half of the CPUs being used and we're still less than two gigabytes on the RAM. This is just mad. Actually, while I'm doing that, let me just push that back to fail it. And let's just see. This will max out the CPU, but let's just see what it does to the RAM. Now, that might have asked you something different if you don't have a thing. Okay, so even in full, full UHD, maxing everything out and failing the timeline, it's just a little over two gig on memory usage just for edius the other thing as well when you have seen there it said 95 percent as well for cpu usage um that extra five percent is other tasks going on in windows so edius is maxing it out okay so let's see what can i do now i know <laughs> let's let's do one of my special color corrections right um and if you like my style of color correction, I'm available as well for doing color correction for people. Yeah, as if. I'm also colorblind as well. <laughs> okay, so let me just pull this over a sec. Right, so I'm gonna do, again, I'm just gonna go crazy here, just, you know, just so we can definitely see that there's a difference on the timeline. 
let me just make this a bit brighter and stupid hold on oh there we go look at that now i don't know this this is the reason why i get asked a lot to do color grading for people okay so i'm going to try that now this definitely will fail and it's just going to do a little bit of talking between the phone and the shield box as well so let's just give that a moment okay now it has failed but that was a full 10 bits let's put it down to eight and see what happens or so click on it just to confirm it now what it's doing it's just going to do a little bit of talking between the phone okay so look at that so in 8-bit where is where you know where it should be that's working now i'm not going to go any more further with this particular scenario right now because that color correction there applied to that clip and whatnot and the, all the frame and resolution sizes that is well enough processing going on there to prove that this little system is more than capable of doing some light 4k work or uhd to be precise now let, while i'm here let me just change the resolution as well so basically we're in a 1080 timeline so i'm going to change that to uhd so now what we're doing we're obviously matching the uh, the sources here so we're matching the the source footage to the project as well let's just see that's the worst performance i've ever seen on any machine ever okay so let me just come down slowly this is still fail it's way too much yeah totally failed okay i reckon maybe a quarter res might get it we might get away with here actually i'll prove myself next. wrong again okay so there we go half resolution and we've uh, done that amazing color grade in real time uh, now basically what i'm i'm actually quite astounded personally at this point because uh, this is the first time i've actually really tried it on this machine to do this i was doing other stuff but it was more in jest only but as you can see here that's uhd footage in a uhd timeline i've only had to drop to half resolution in order to put that color on i mean if i t if i switch the you know the, the the color off and then go back to 8 bit now it's asking us is this what we want oh wait there so now leave it back on half res on a connect to so we'll click yes or click on it there we go so the whole thing there is i think this is performing amazingly well and another thing to bear in mind here as well um the chances are if somebody is looking for the cheapest possible machine that they can get away with it's highly unlikely that they use an external video monitoring as well in which case if you're like tied to the GUI as in what this example is doing then if you even drop down to a quarter resolution for 4k footage in the timeline you will not see a difference in that that monitor there because all things considered the size of that monitor the scaling that's going on and all the rest of it you've still technically not exceeded or gone beyond the resolution of the footage and i know that it isn't like for like in this particular instance to just downgrade the resolution in a linear fashion but all things being equal it's very similar and as we can see there so i'll do that let me get this back into focus well actually let me get to somewhere that's in focus <laughs> Okay, and as we can see here, it's come up with an identification code, which is exactly the same as what it is on the screen. I mean, obviously, as you're watching this, this is gonna, gonna have gone through a number of encodes and whatnot, but believe me, that picture there looks exactly the same in a quarter res as what it did on full in that size on the screen in this particular project. Okay, I don't think I need to go any further with this now. So this is exactly what you can do with a 100 pound machine. Now, I just want to kind of clear up a couple of things at the end here as well. What it is, I've made a few comments on the forum. Now, I just want to let people know I don't make comments without knowing what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? And if I need to ask a question, I ask a question. Do you know, it's that simple. So I'm not one of these people who thinks he knows it all. I would say I know a lot. Um, and I most certainly know a lot more than a lot of people on the forum as well. That might sound arrogant, but the thing is, I make posts on the forum, which I actually back up with empirical proof, and I still get questioned about what I'm saying. Now, I would also like to directly address Noah. Is it no Noah Film or Noah Films? Noah, you've made um, a few 
few real off the cuff kind of remarks toward me in one of the posts and one of them you said in fact you know what let me let me not kind of like get this wrong let me just paraphrase exactly what you said okay so yeah this is the one thing that really got me going and as far as i'm concerned you know this is a little bit off you know a little, little bit too off the cuff and i didn't respond in text to you about this one Noah, because i just thought well there's nothing better to prove someone wrong than to show it which i think i've just done but nonetheless here's what you said like i said first he has to give a budget and then be more clear about expectations if 4k is part of that even if it's in the distant future then you can start to give better advice but i will leave that part to you you're referring to me when you say that as you made it clear that you are the only one knowledgeable enough to scare away new users on this forum. Well, actually, you were making reference to something that I said earlier on, which was the distinction between people with experience and people without it. I never once said I was the only person on the forum. There's a whole bunch of people on the forum who are very experienced, who know exactly what they're talking about. I'd say I'm one of them. And I would also say, by all the advice that you've given and for what you've just said there, which was actually, you know, you're quite, you're being very insulting. You definitely are not one of them. Do you know what I mean? And this video proves it. And as far as I'm concerned, you're saying here I scare away, or I would be potentially scaring away new Edius users on the forum. Absolutely not. The whole point of this video, right, is because I know for a fact that it will get picked up by non-users, or so, sorry, yeah, non edius users and people who are interested in it. My whole thing is is to encourage people to use Edius, and that is exactly all my posts are being about, is to encourage the use of Edius. So, Noah, you were completely wrong. And the thing is, is well, when you're that wrong, don't carry on making it wronger by attacking someone, do you know what I mean, who's totally right, because this video's proved that. And just to be very, very clear, I love Edius, and I would like to consider myself Edius's biggest fanboy, right? And so anybody who comes across this video who's never used Edius, take it from me, it's amazing. The thing that I would do is go to the Grass Valley main website, download the, one of the, like, the demos or the trials of whatever version of Edius you have an interest in, and try it out. And most certainly, try it out on a low-spec machine. Also, if you're going to be trying out the work group version, which, although is a lot more expensive, it does have that neat function that I've been using here, which allows you to drop resolution on the timeline. So yeah, just to be clear, Edius is amazing. All right, I think I've proven my point very well here. Here, and hopefully some of the bits that have been talking about have been useful to other people as well and maybe you know some people who are kind of like very familiar with Edius may have learned some stuff here as well and not just listening to me rabbit and on like a mad person all right then so the last thing that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now